call this meeting to order. We'll begin with a roll call. Mrs. Becker? Here. Mr. Carangelo? Mrs. Chu? Here. Mr. Sismar? Mrs. Gwas? Here. Mr. Hong? Here. Mrs. Lax? Here. Mrs. Reese? Here. Mr. Winston? Here. We have a quorum. Please rise to salute the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice of and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed and acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of this act, the East Brunswick Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published by having the date, time, and place thereof posted at the Board of Education offices located at 760 Route 18, East Brunswick, New Jersey. Written notice was also provided to the Sentinel, the Newark Star-Ledger, the Home News and Tribune, and the Municipal Clerk of East Brunswick. All Board of Education meetings, with the exception of executive session discussions, are videotaped for later broadcast. It is the policy of the Board of Education that videotaped meetings are not edited for any purpose. Individuals who speak at the Board's public meetings should be aware of these videotaping rules. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is the reorganization meeting of the Board, at which time um, Re-elected board members will be sworn into office, and the board will also elect its officers before continuing on with other business. So the first order of business this evening is the appointment of temporary chairperson. And so uh, with that, may I have a motion for the appointment of temporary chair? So moved. Moved by Mr. Winston, seconded by Mrs. Becker. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. The next order of business will be the administering of the oaths of office, and we will begin front and center with Mrs. Gloss. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Heather Gloss, I, Heather Gloss, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and the Constitution of the State of New Jersey, and that I will bear true faith, and that I will bear true faith, and allegiance to the same, and allegiance to the same, and to the governments established, and to the governments established in the United States, in the United States, and this state, and this state, under the authority of the people, under the authority of the people, and I do solemnly. Swear, and I do solemnly swear that I possess the qualifications that I possess the qualifications prescribed by law prescribed by law for the office for the office of member of member of a board of education of a board of education and that I will faithfully and that I will faithfully impartially impartially and justly perform and justly perform all duties of that office all duties of that office according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability so help me God so help me God congratulations Mr. Hong. Stand by your dad? That's good. Yeah. Without this, I'm cold. There's no way I can do anything. Mr. Hong, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. 
I, Li Wu Hong. I, Li Wu Hong. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And the Constitution of the State of New Jersey. And that I will bear. I will bear. True faith. Truth is and allegiance and allegiance to the same to the same and to the governments established to the government established in the United States in the United States and this state and this state under the authority of the people under the authority of the people and I do solemnly swear I do solemnly swear that I possess the qualifications I possess the qualifications prescribed by law prescribed by law for the office for the office of member of the member of a board of education of board of education and that I will faithfully and I will faithfully impartially impartially and justly perform and justly perform all duties of that office all, all duties of that office according to the best of my ability according to the best of my ability of my ability of my ability so help me God so help me God Thank you. Thank you. Take a recess after you're elected, after it is elected. The call, the call. The next order of business uh, is the nomination for board president, and at this time I will accept any no such nominations from the floor. Mrs. Becker. I would like to nominate, again, have the privilege of nominating Lori Lex to continue as president of our Board of Education. Lori did a wonderful job last year. Um, I would say it wasn't an easy year, but there is no such thing as an easy year. We, we take this job knowing that it's not easy, and that you need to have determination and commitment and compassion. Use a lot of critical thinking, a lot of listening, and you have to have a lot of heart. And Lori possesses all of that. I feel that Lori brings a humanity to our board. I feel that Lori, and this is very important, Lori understands the role of a board member. And that may sound like, duh, may sound like simple, but it's not. It's actually very complicated. There's a lot of fine lines. Some you can cross, some you can't. And Lori knows that. Well, she better. She had a really good mentor, okay? Lori knows that. Lori understands. Lori understands the concept that this is a consensus-seeking group. That is only when we work together, when we trust each other, when we depend on each other, when we listen to each other, when we respectfully agree to disagree, that we accomplish anything. So I'm very confident that she will continue and we will be the functioning board that this district needs us to be. Thank you. Are there any other nominations from the floor? Okay, seeing none, the chair closes the nominations for board president. Uh, the vote for board president is done by written ballot and so and that is pursuant to uh, board bylaw 0152. So I am distributing a ballot to the board members present. Kindly complete the ballot, inserting the name. And providing your signature and your printed name on the ballot and then return those ballots to the chair.
The ballot results are as follows. For Lori Lax, voted, uh, so voted by Li Wu Hong. For Lori Lax, so voted by Vicki Becker. For Lori Lax, so voted by Lori Lax. For Lori Lax, so voted by Heather Gloss. For Lori Lax, so voted by Susanna Chu. For Lori Lax, so voted by Barbara Reese. Uh, no vote by Jeffrey Winston. Congratulations, Mrs. Lax. Yeah. We will now do a little shuffling of seats so that Mrs. Lax can assume the chair. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, I'm looking forward to another good year. Um, we do have a very good board, and when we all work together, we get a lot of stuff done. So um, I appreciate your uh, confidence in me. Um, now I have to find the number five right here. Nominations for board vice president. The board president will accept nominations for board vice president for board members in attendance. Every member has a right to make a nomination. Thus, the second is not required pursuant to bylaws 0152. So may I please have a motion for or a nomination? Susanna. Yes. Um, so I would like to nominate uh, Heather Gwass for board vice president. We've all gotten to know, that, know Heather over the past three years as she rounded out her first term uh, on the Board of Education. Um, she's a special ed teacher, as you all know, and an English teacher, a parent to three lovely children um, who I love to watch grow up. I mean, I just love to watch all the kids grow up in front of us. It's just, it's just amazing. Um, and a very engaged member of the community. So um, everything I say here, we have had the opportunity to see in action over the past three years. So I don't think I'm going to say anything that's going to be a shock or a surprise if anybody's been watching Board of Education meetings and participating uh, in the process. Um, I'm just kind of summarizing my own personal observations for, for the purpose of this nomination. Um, we've seen her add insightful comments uh, and questions during our discussions where she draws from her experience. We've seen her add perspective to discussions to encourage a focus on collaboration and teamwork and encourage a healthy dialogue. She's a passionate advocate of initiatives that will place our children first and considers the needs of the community. I've appreciated Heather's voice of reason as we navigate the challenges that we face. And this voice of reason will help continue, help us continue as we steer this massive ship uh, that we have filled with the valuable cargo who are our children of this community. We have faced and conquered some unprecedented challenges. It wasn't that long ago that we were meeting weekly and we were worrying about you know, what the next day, what the next week would look like. And the administrative team were working around the clock uh, to manage through these uncharted uh, pathways of virtual learning and everything that came after that. And I know that Heather, together with Lori, um, will provide the leadership in a, in a manner that encourages the open and respectful dialogue that we all need and deserve. And while we don't all always agree on the issues, <clears throat> Lori understands and Heather understands. We can only move forward by listening to diverse perspectives, re respecting our diverse opinions, and working together for the best outcomes for our students and our community. So, thank you. Are there any other nominations? Okay, seeing none, upon no further nominations for the board vice president. Um, I will close the nominations in accordance with bylaws 0152. Board officers voting shall take place by written ballot after nominations are closed. Each board member will be provided a paper ballot after nominations are closed for each position. 
Each board member must print and sign their name on their paper ballot. The ballot should be read aloud by the board secretary, identifying the board member and their vote. The person with the majority votes, the board members present will win. So I'm going to, this is mine. Okay. The results of the ballot vote are as follows. For Heather Gloss, as voted by Vicki Becker. For Heather Gloss, as voted by Lee Wu Hong. For Heather Gloss, as voted by Lori Lax. For Heather Gloss, as voted by Heather Gloss. For Heather Gloss, as voted by Susanna Chu. For Heather Gloss, as voted by Barbara Reese. And for Heather Gloss, as voted by Jeffrey Winston. Congratulations. Congratulations. Okay. On to our adoption of New Jersey School Board Member Code of Ethics is the East Brunswick Board of Education Code of Ethics. President Lax has asked that um, the board secretary uh, read the details of the code of ethics. And the resolution reads as follows, that the New Jersey School Board's code of ethics <clears throat> is formally adopted as the East Brunswick Board of Education code of ethics and that each member of the Board of Education shall adhere to the tenets therein <clears throat> as follows. Number one, I will uphold and enforce all laws, state board rules and regulations and court orders pertaining to schools and desired changes should be brought about only through legal and ethical procedures. Number two, I will make decisions in terms of the educational welfare of children and will seek to develop and maintain public schools which meet the individual needs of all children regardless of their ability, race, creed, sex, or social standing. Number three, I will confine my board action to policy making, planning, and appraisal, and I will help those to frame policies and plans only after the board has consulted those who will be affected by them. Number four, I will carry out my responsibility not to administer the schools, but together with my fellow board members to see that they are well run. Number five, I will recognize the authority re that authority rests with the Board of Education and will make no personal promises nor take any private action which may compromise the board. Number six, I will refuse to surrender my independent judgment to special interest or partisan political groups or to use the schools for personal gain or for the gain of friends. Number seven, I will hold confidential all matters pertaining to the schools, which, if disclosed, would needlessly injure individuals or the schools. But in all other matters, I will provide accurate information and, in concert with my fellow board members, interpret to the staff the aspirations of the community for its schools. Number eight, I will vote to appoint the best qualified personnel available after consideration of the recommendation of the Chief Administrative Officer. Number nine, I will support and protect school personnel in proper performance of their duties. And number 10, I will refer all complaints to the Chief Administrative Officer and will act on such complaints at public meetings 
only after failure of an administrative solution. You need a I need a motion, motion. please. So Mrs. Moved. Becker, seconded by Mr. Hong. Any discussion? This is a roll call vote. Would the secretary please call the roll? Mrs. Becker? Yes. Mrs. Chu? Yes. Ms. Guas? Yes. Mr. Hong? Yes. Mrs. Reese? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. President Lax? Yes. Motion carries. Um, bylaws, policies, and regulations. Be it resolved the bylaws, policies, and regulations is printed and codified in the comprehensive document entitled Bylaws and Policies of the Board of Education of the Township of East Brunswick as referenced by the index reflected in the attachment are hereby adopted. And be it resolved that all bylaws, policies, and regulations heretofore adopted by the Board of Education of the Township of East Brunswick and inconsistent with the bylaws and policies hereby adopted or hereby rescinded and be it further resolved that in the event any policy, part of a policy or section of the bylaws is judged to be inconsistent with law or inoperative by a court of competent jurisdiction or is invalidated by a policy or contract duly adopted by this board, the remaining bylaws, policies, and parts of policy shall remain in full effect. So moved. moved by Mrs. Second. Becker, second by Mr. Hong. Is there any discussion? Will the secretary please call the roll? Mrs. Becker. Yes. <coughs> Mrs. Chu. Yes. Mm. Mrs. Uh, Ms. Guas. Yes. Mr. Hong. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Reese. Yes. Mr. Winston. Yes. President Lax. Yes. Motion carries. Meeting notices. <coughs> Where is PL 1975, Chapter 231, Section 14, permits any person to obtain copies of any regular meeting schedule or revision described in Section 13 of said law and advance notice of any regular special or rescheduled meeting described in Subsection 3D of said law. And where is the Board of Education of the East Brunswick School District is permitted by law to charge a reasonable sum to cover the costs of providing such notice. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board authorizes the distribution of the aforesaid mentioned materials to individuals who request it in writing without payment of fees for the 2023 calendar year, and be it further resolved that the aforesaid mentioned material will be provided to the news media and the township clerk without charge. It's so a motion by second. Mrs. Becker, second by Mr. Hong. Any discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Our official depositories. Recommendation that the following banking institutions are designated as official depositories for district funds, including the investment of district funds effective January 1st, 2023, Bank of New York Mellon, New Albany, Ohio, PNC Bank, East Brunswick and South River, New Jersey, TD Wealth Management, Cherry Hill, New Jersey. And that the Assistant Superintendent for Business and Support Operations, Board Secretary, is authorized to invest funds of the Board with the designated depositories of the District from time to time, and that the authorization to invest and discontinue investments be signed by the Assistant Superintendent for Business and Support Operations, slash Board Secretary, and be reported to the Board of Education on the Secretary's monthly report. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Second. Becker, second by Mr. Hong. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Abstentions? Motion carries. Okay, official newspaper for publication of legal public notices. A uh, recommendation that for the 2022 calendar year, the Home News and Tribune and the Star Ledger as the official publications for legal public notices pertaining to the school district budget, bond related materials, and all other district official legal public notices pursuant to NJSA 35 1 1. Um, May I please have a motion? Before there's a motion, oh, oh. let me just yeah, uh, make call. the correction. This is for the 2023 calendar year. Okay, we'll amend it to the 2023 calendar year. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Becker. Second, second by Mr. Hong. Any discussion? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Yep. Okay. Our board member prohibited acts in school ethics training. Since we do have uh, a few unfortunate absences this evening, we're going to move that to the next meeting. Dr. Valeski, would you like to give your first superintendent's report of the year? President Lax, I think I would like to do that. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and Happy New Year. The artwork on display in the boardroom <coughs> this evening was created by students from Frost Elementary School. The art teacher of these talented students is Julia Komosinski and Nairi Delgado is the principal. On Friday, December 23rd, I had the pleasure of attending Alumni Day at the high school. The high school counseling department welcomed back graduates from the classes of 2021 and 2022 to speak with our current seniors in order to help them prepare for next year's new experiences. 
Many of our seniors are anxiously awaiting their letters of acceptance and have questions about their futures. And hearing from students who have recently gone through this transition often alleviates concerns and provides our current seniors with valuable advice and insight into what they may expect. Our returning alumni discuss the application process, information about their schools and major of study and why they chose that particular school, their goals and how their college or university will help them to achieve those goals and likes and dislikes about their individual schools. Finally, they gave important strategies for a successful transition to college, including experiences with academics, roommates, and campus life. It was another outstanding alumni day at EBHS. On Tuesday, January 3rd, parents of students in grades K to 6 were invited to an Envision Math Parent Night. The evening provided an overview of our new Envision Math program along with resources for parents to use at home to support their child's learning. Additional information may be found on the Envision Math tile on the district website. Once a month, students at Bound Monroe meet with their family circle. Family circles are a mixture of students ranging from kindergarten through fourth grade. During their time together, families complete activities that support their social and emotional learning. The thematic units created by the School Climate Committee help students build their skills in self and social awareness, responsible decision making, and important relationship building. Topics covered have included understanding school-wide expectations, promoting Peace Week, honoring local veterans for Veterans Day, and supporting the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Family circles are one way we aim to maintain a positive school climate and culture which directly supports student learning and growth. Tonight was the first Punching for a Purpose program <coughs> organized by our student assistant specialists and counselors at the high school to give kids a positive, healthy outlet to deal with stress. So thank you to Lori Lack, Sharon Sullivan, and the Mayor's Charity Fund for some financial support. And Mr. Hung, I'm sorry. Our script was incorrect. Just missing a very important person. <coughs> Pardon me. You were just missing a very important person. Oh, sorry. Uh, the athletic department hosted the Bears Wrestling Invitational over winter break. Our girls wrestling team took second place in the event. Our winter athletic teams are now starting their division play. Congratulations to our December High School Athletes of the Month. Students were selected for this honor by the coaching staff based on performance, demonstration of leadership, effort and practice, and as always, modeling exceptional character. Just a reminder, Monday, January 16th, schools will be closed in observance of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. So during the Envision Math Night I referenced earlier, a parent approached me and she asked if East Brunswick was ready for all the changes this year. And without hesitation, I said yes. And the reason I was so quick to answer is because our people make a difference. Every accomplishment this year is tied to the efforts of the EB team and the Board of Education, which work to not only make our student, staff, and family experiences better, but to also make sure the educational value of EB schools remains high. I want to thank our student, staff, families, and the Board of Education for supporting our journeys of continuous improvement and never accepting the status quo. As we begin 2023, here is a snapshot of the big ticket accomplishments so far this school year. Grade level reconfigurations, installation of temporary classroom space for seventh grade at Churchill, later and healthier start times for Churchill and the high school, a new math curriculum, and a new turf field and track at the high school. And finally, the Government Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada, also known as GFOA, has awarded the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting to East Brunswick Public Schools for its annual financial comprehensive financial report for the fiscal year ending June 30th, 2021. The Finance Department has received this award for seven years and is one of only three school districts in the state to secure this recognition. Our Board of Education's commitment to fiscal transparency and thoughtful monetary policies 
is also represented by this award. Mr. Juliana, Mr. Krochfeld, Mrs. Rosenving are commended and congratulated for continuing to achieve this high standard of excellence for our finance department and our entire school district. So thank you. <laughs> and that's the end. That's the end, although I'm gonna actually add one more paragraph to that. Because in the article, the certificate of achievement is um, the, the highest form of recognition in the area of government accounting and financial reporting. Its attainment represents a significant accomplishment by government and its management. So I just, wow. I think this is amazing. There's an article on tap for anyone who wants to read it about this, but I just think that's terrific. We, we say how great your department is, and I think they're in the back. I, I see them. Absolutely. Um, but really, this is just three, Who, you said three? Only three districts yeah. in the state have achieved the yeah. recognition. The others are afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I have to give recognition to Joe Crotchfeld and the entire finance department because um, they are second to none. Um, they are True. a terrific team dedicated to uh, the school district and doing what's right uh, for the community. So, thank you. Kudos to all of you. Amazing. <coughs> well, speaking of amazing, um, before I, I call <coughs> a recess so we can let our young um, ones go home, Dr. Valeski mentioned that there are lots of kids out there waiting to find out where they'll be going next year, but this beautiful young lady that graces us um, at every meeting, I don't believe is waiting anymore. So would you like to officially announce to everyone and tell us uh, what else is going on in your world? Although I think this is, uh, this is big enough to... Um, so I had this in my report, but um, yeah, so basically through December, all of our seniors have started to get their like early decision, early action, um, college decisions back. So I got mine back. Actually, in the I believe the last board meeting was on December 15th. So I actually skipped to stay home and get my college decision. <laughs> so apologies for that. I'll just be honest. Um, but yeah, so I got accepted into my early action school, um, which is Prince University. Oh. So. Please say that again. What? Please. Please say that again. Princeton, Princeton University. University. <laughs> Megan, I want you to know that that's contingent upon you graduating. <laughs> I know. It's a, little, it's a little stressful because yeah. it didn't seem stressful before, but then I'm looking at my schedule and I'm thinking, like, I have to make it through midterm. <laughs> I'm not alive. Another half a year of school. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow. But yeah, that's, it, was, it was pretty good news for me. Just Congratulations. wow. Awesome. Fabulous. Okay, um, so I'll start with before break since I wasn't here for that, but um, our student council had a donation drive. So we collected a lot of toys and like holiday gifts for people in our community, which is really nice. Um, our orchestra and our choir did um, like music in the halls. So basically they set up all their instruments and stuff in um, sort of like the lobby. And then any class who wanted to come here, like holiday music, could come into the hallways and just like listen to them play, which is really nice. And that was, I believe, the day before we got out for break. Um, so that was right before winter break. We also had alumni day, um, which was really awesome for um, a lot of our students who knew people from older grades that already graduated. Um, a lot of people who like our college freshmen and a lot of college sophomores came back, so that was really fun. Um, I was walking back to my APUSH classroom and I passed by a classroom where I saw five of my old friends and I snuck in. <laughs> <laughs> but don't tell my teacher that, she doesn't know. Um, but yeah, so it was just really fun to talk to them and see how their college experience was. And I think after that, all the seniors are just ready to go to college. But we do have another half a year of school. So we have that. Um, and the winter break was pretty good for everyone. For the seniors, it was a lot of college application cramming, but I think overall it was very relaxing. I heard a lot about a lot of good vacations. Um, and, oh, another thing was with the alumni coming back, a lot of our winter sports teams had competitions. So the alumni would like, go back to their sports teams and go watch their competitions with them or go to practices with them. Um, we've had two meets since um, the college kids have come back for break. So they've come to our meets and cheered us on, and that was a really nice thing to do as well. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all that's been going on. 
So every year you guys leave us and we say, please come back and visit. Some I'm, of them I'm do. assuming you're going to do that. <laughs> because She's right now, right. because I, I know you are in New Jersey, because um, somebody, I see that smiling face, Miss Nora has actually come back to visit. Do you want to she can say hello? Yeah. Come on up, Nora. We want to hear, we want to hear a, a college report from you. I know putting you on the spot. Nora, come right but here. But it's so come nice. Right come to you can be superintendent for the moment. Oh my goodness. It's so nice to have you back. This is my favorite chair. Turn on. <laughs> is, it, is it on? Turn on the. There you go. You know what to do. I got you. I, what do you want to know? There's so much. How was so life since you left us? Um, it's so grand. I love college. <laughs> you yeah. do. I know uh, Dr. Valeski said roommates with like a scary tone. I love my roommate. She, oh, she's not scary at all. <laughs> That's the way it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I still actually talk to my college roommate 30 years later, so <laughs> it's, it can be done. Any Hopefully. advice that you have for Megan and for the rest of the seniors? I don't know. We were talking about how awful Princeton is earlier. It's not really that great a school. Apparently it's weird. <laughs> I didn't know this, but it's weird, so... <laughs> I, I just, you, you, you lost everything once you said, I'm just so proud of you. It's very exciting. It's exciting for you, your family, the district. Um, it's terrific. It's exciting for us because we know her. Yes, yes. She's going to do great things. And she's going to come back like Nora did because right now Nora's the one that's actually listened to us and come back to see us. <laughs> Which you do have an open door. So anytime you want to come in, we would love to have you. Next year we'll come back together, and then the year after we'll collect another one, and then eventually it'll just be <laughs> us coming uh, in I like, like a that. conga line. And see? So we'll take the whole background. <laughs> I like that. All you right. actually <laughs> going to Princeton will be close enough to come to every board meeting. Every other. We, w we won't torture her. Every Think other. about it. So basically I have no excuse is what you're saying. <laughs> right. Be close enough. Hello, Uber. Well, Nora's close too. She's That's true. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, the first thing that Dr. Valeski said when he saw me was, "Why well, I, ha I haven't been to any yet, so. I know, see? I had, a, I had a Thursday class, I swear. <laughs> That's okay. Well, I'm glad that you came back to see us. This is very exciting. I'm glad you're doing well. Megan, I know this is going to be you smiling and That's beaming true. about your Prince experience a year from now. In that specific chair. In that specific <laughs> chair. <laughs> this is my chair. I'm gunning for your chair. <laughs> Oh. All right, thank you so much, ladies. Nora, it's so nice to see you. <laughs> I'm actually going to call um, a quick recess before we go on with the rest of our agenda um, in case any of our young learners want to go home um, since there is school tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We can't make it an official holiday. So um, thank you for coming, and we'll resume in about five minutes. Okay, welcome back. Um, we are at the good of the cause for the public. The Board of Education recognizes the value of public comment on educational issues and the importance of allowing members of the public to express themselves on school matters of community interest. To protect the privacy of all students and staff, concerns regarding individual students and staff members should generally be addressed by first meeting with the appropriate administrative staff. In order to permit the fair and orderly expression of such comment, the board should provide a period for public comment at every meeting of the board. A participant will be limited to three minutes duration. Elapsed tie will be determined through the use of a timing device operated by the board secretary. And I always like to remind um, those in the public that this is the time for the public to speak to the board. Um, do not mistake our uh, silence on this end um, as not caring. We certainly care. We are listening to you. And anything that needs to be further addressed will be referred to the two lovely ladies sitting in the front so that we get your information and can get back to you if there are any questions for follow-up. So I will open it up. Is there anyone wishing to speak to the board this evening? Okay, that was very quiet. <laughs> All right, then I will be closing the public portion and moving on to our Board of Education agenda. Before I ask for a motion to combine items one through three on our Board of Education items, is there anything needing separating out? No, they may please have a motion for items one through three. Mrs. Becker, and a second. Mr. Hong, is there any discussion? No, this is a roll call vote. The Secretary, please call the roll. Mrs. Becker? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Mrs. Chu? Yes. Ms. Uh, Mrs. Gross? Yes. Mr. Hong? Yes. Mrs. Reese? Yes, we'll abstain from number one. Yeah, I'm sorry, I need to abstain number one. Noted. Mr. Winston? Uh, yes, uh, with an abstention on number two, please. Noted. 
And President Lacks. Yes, she carries. Um, is there anything on curriculum and instruction items one through six that we said writing out? Then may I please have a motion for items one through six under curriculum and instruction. So moved. Moved. moved by Mr. Winston, second by Mrs. Becker. Um, so I noticed on there that we have a, a new uh, dual enrollment with uh, TCNJ. To augment Middlesex College, yes. Not to replace, but to augment what we already did. Okay, so they'll, mm -hmm. so they'll be offered... Additional courses through TCNJ. So each course that's offered right now, so I, like I noticed AP Psych was on mm -hmm. there and they pushed. Mm -hmm. Those right now are through Middlesex. So does that mean you'd have the choice of which school? No, they're not. No, they're not. They're oh, they're not. Duplicate. No. These are separate. Yeah, these are TCNJ. So then, so each course will have only one of those colleges corresponding there. Okay, so this year for the kids that are in, so those are not those AP classes that are not dual enrollment. Okay, this is great. Um, now this is a little bit higher of a price point, is that correct? I saw it. Because I think Middlesex was about 100 and something, and this is 500. Okay. 125, right? Yep. No. Right. Yeah, no, I think that's terrific. I think that is terrific. Always looking ahead. That's great. That you do yeah, that. The, the intention is to expand the program as we can where colleges and universities want to do that dual enrollment. Uh, but having our teachers you know, certified to be able to teach those classes is an important component of it. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. You're too late for my kid. She's an AP psych this year. <laughs> no, I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, is there any discussion on items one through six? Mr. Hong. Yes, uh, I do have multiple questions or comments. For the number one, the bid uh, rejection. So every year our students had, uh, had very good science trip to uh, fail for lack. And very unfortunately, this year's uh, uh, bus bid was rejected. So my concern is, well, we're going to start this uh, new bid process. Will our students' trip be impacted? Uh, we have more than sufficient time to be able to rebid and get new results. Okay, thank you. So uh, for the for the item two, three, four. So we are trying to get outside expert for the same shield, the uh, the the Wizard of Oz. But I realize all those contractors are from three different organizations. Is there any way we can get all those experts from one organization for better efficiency? To that, if the three experts come from the same organization, that will help our students better, is my opinion. So I don't know why uh, we got all three from different, three totally different organizations. And uh, if possible, in future, I will suggest try to get all experts from one resource. Dr. Bowley, do you, would you mind, I mean? We can certainly look at that. Um, these are in, independent folks, and we have been using several of these for um, many, many years. Yeah, they bring their individual expertise to our students, so that's the reason. Um, and, and, and their prices are, are really efficient, considering the services they provide. So we take great care in that. I think Mrs. Becker has a comment to make on that as well. Um, as a, a former theater kid, in high school, college, probably the womb. Um, so I understand um, intellectually, academically, your point, Lilo, is a very, very good one, except when it comes to the arts. Um, the consistency of or originating organization is not as important as the expertise. Because the art, if you think about it, it's all about individuality. And by bringing a variety of artists of residence in, it can only add to our students' um, experience. So it's, even though we, we try to be consistent, and consistency is wonderful when it comes to academics, with the arts, it takes on somewhat of a different meaning. That's just my perspective as um, a former uh, theater student. So I, I, I agree with you in theory about consistency, except for this. Okay. So for the uh, item number six about the College of New Jersey. So uh, I did a math. So this cost for one credit is only $137.50. 
and I did a search for Rutgers this year. So in state, the tuition is 416 to $507 for each credit. And for out of state students, each credit it cost $887 to $1,244. So that is a very good deal. So I urge parents and students take advantage of this great job Dr. Uh, Velasquez and his team created. Take this class, save you big money for your future, for your tuition. Now the tuition is so high, I'm kind of scared. So, <laughs> so you know, it's only $137.50 for each credit. So why not do it? Okay, that's all I have. Thank Excellent you. point. And all those children who were here tonight, they were all Liwus. So <laughs> <laughs> that's that's he has a why lot, he's scared. A lot yeah. of he has a lot of college Good, educations, honey. but no, that's an excellent point, Lewu. Excellent mm. point. He's claiming all the children. I have two I know. college tuitions. Right, Mrs. Miss, yeah, you got you got three of those college tuitions yourself, lady. Mrs. Chu. Oh, I just want to add on to to what um, was just discussed about item six. It is so exciting to see us expanding that program because mm. I remember when it first started up and the work that um, this team did to establish relationship with Middlesex. And the fact that wasn't it last year or the year before that we had someone graduate with last year, last yeah. year that last was our year. first student that graduated with a uh, associate's degree. Mm -hmm. And so you'll, you'll likely have another this year. That's exciting. I mean, just mm -hmm. think about, you know, how, how this will really help a lot of families make college more affordable, but they have to plan ahead mm -hmm. for it and mm -hmm. just think through, you know, what, what they want to do and plan and take as many of these classes as they can. I have a question. In reading this, this will be the first year of the partnership. Is this for the students this year or for next fall? For next fall. Next, it's 2023-24. Oh, okay. Me neither. I know, right? I wore a year to it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? <laughs> Abstentions? Motion carries. May I please have an item for our one uh, facilities? Item this evening. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Becker. Second by Mrs. Reese. Any discussion? All those in favor? Excuse me. Aye. Oh, I'm Excuse sorry. Me. Excuse me. I do have a discussion. A uh, question uh, from Juliana. <coughs> so these come up periodically, and, and, and I wonder every time how. Um, when a bid goes out for a job, I imagine that we define it pretty clearly on what exactly it is we want to get done. I'm reading the wording in this. It's if I'm interpreting it right, we either added something to the job or more was needed on the job that was already bid on. And when I look at this list, I find it unusual to think that clean, clearing and site disposal, um, cutting, asphalt removal, site restoration, detectable warning surface, st uh, striping and signage, I can't imagine these were a surprise. So, so either this was a new job added uh, that we're connecting to this. Is it a change order Is off it, of an existing? Then what was the job that we didn't realize that we had to do site, uh, what, what do we call it? Uh, asphalt removal prior when we bid it. So these were additional uh, aspects of the work that we did not originally uh, have planned to have done. Here at this building, it was specifically uh, the handicapped parking spaces in the front, uh, some curbing, and I believe also another uh, access point for handicapped access in the back. Um, that was not part of the original scope. We were originally focused on uh, areas of the, of the parking lot that had significantly deteriorated, but then what we found was we had access issues that had not come to our attention before that. They were brought to our attention. And so in order to make the best use of the contractor, since the contractor was on site, we determined let's move forward to have this additional work incorporated into their scope. All right. These were, and, and quite honestly, these, these became safety issues. Mm -hmm. So it, it became an, an item of, Let's get this done because there's the potential that um, we're not going to provide appropriate access to the facility 
where someone could get hurt. We so, actually had an employee get hurt. Oh, well, I'm not disputing was, that yeah. they have to be done. I don't think yeah. you're misunderstanding my point. My question is that when you originally designed a job, you just said this was a di different area that could present an issue. That would be a separate bit. That's a separate part of the I understand the convenience of having contract contractors on site. I understand that. But this, this, to me, this just opens up an enormous can of worms that we could approve something as a board and then let's just add another $41,000 onto it. Actually, um, <coughs> there are limitations uh, under the law, limitations. Uh, there, there's a 10%. capitation in terms of percentage of right. the increase on contract. Was it 10% on contracts? 20%. 20%. Okay. Um, and based on the original bid, because this contract had been reduced because we did eliminate some areas that didn't require that were not required. So from the original bid amount, there was a change order that the board had previously approved, reducing the contract amount. We were able to utilize some of those resources to offset this. In, in this change order, we did not expand, you know, we could not take that bid for site work and go into a new site and do something that had not been part of any project. So let's say, for example, the bid here, administration building, but we noticed something at Chittick. I know, just this is all at offer. I understand that. So we couldn't go to Chittick and expand the work there. But at, for the sites where the bids were specific to and the type of work that was being done, that's completely permissible under the law. I, un I understand it's permissible under the law, Mr. Julian. I'm not, I'm not <coughs> saying we did anything illegal. <coughs> what I'm, I'm asking for is clarity on the type of work that we're doing in these facilities. If it needed to be done before, uh, after the fact, it needed to be done before the fact. So in evaluating the scope of any job, look around. You know, do we have to do this thing to, to make, then add it to, I don't, I'm not, I'm not questioning its legality. I'm questioning its practicality when it comes to these change orders. And I am staying within the law as that wasn't even remotely close to my question. It, it's, it's, these come up periodically and each time I wonder, you know, I just think on a personal basis, if I have a contractor to my house and I say, well, geez, you know, while you're here, put on an extra, an extra room on the house, you know, um, that's not a change order. That's an extra room on my house. So, which is fine, and, I, and I'm willing to pay for it under my own law and, and, and uh, take care of it. So I'm just saying, I'm not sure why we're not seeing the scope of this. I, I, I yield. I mean, I, I have nothing else to add on that. Mrs. Becker. You know, Jeff, um, when I got on the board, <coughs> change orders used to drive me crazy because I, 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 I had the same questions that you did. And then um, I, my significant other for the last 10 years is a cost engineer on big construction projects. So caring about those blank, blank change orders have become a part of our everyday conversation. And I had asked him when, when I first met him, why are there always so many change orders in construction projects? I don't understand. Don't you people plan? Don't you think? Don't you think ahead? Don't you think around? He goes, it's nothing to do with that. It's the nature of the business. He says, I don't know any better way to describe it. Change orders, closeouts, that's, that's what we do. That's the whole financial aspect of managing these construction projects. So. I'm not trying to offer you any comfort, but from someone who also used to wonder about change orders, now I live with somebody who it's, it's, it's their life, and it just seems to be construction. Yeah. I appreciate it's his life. You know, this is, this is taxpayer money, and, and, you know, it deserves explanation. I can understand a change order of discovering an oil, um, what do they call them, the oil? Oil things under the ground. Hey, tank. Oil tank. Oil tank. An oil tank under the ground gets discovered. That's a change order. But but to see the, this list, you know what? Why don't we just add a six by eight by eighteen concrete curb? That that was there before. This didn't just. You know, we didn't find this underground. Yeah, yeah, I. It's 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 tempting <coughs> to to always look and say, well, shouldn't we have no. Uh, but I'm telling you, yeah. what I have learned about change orders mm -hmm. is they rule construction projects. I bet they do. 
uh, as long as you have I'm, a checkbook I'm somewhere. You. I imagine they would. Okay, I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Anything else? No? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. Um, is there anything on financial services items 1 through 15 that needs separating out? <coughs> no, may I please have a motion for the financial <coughs> services. So moved. moved by Mrs. Becker. Second by Mrs. Reese. Is there any discussion? Uh, yes, uh, I have a Mr. question Winston. on one item. I'm okay. sorry, did you call with somebody else? Mr. Winston. Oh, okay. Um, <coughs> Regard, what number, Jeff? Uh, I'm sorry. On uh, <coughs> number financial services number two, uh, what is the name? I always forget. Uh, S S. Well, I, uh, I don't have the initials. Our um, architects, Paret Samjan. Yes. So I see they're appearing again. Roughly eighty thousand dollars. I've requested this in the past, and um, I would like to know. What portion of that, and same question I've asked a couple of other times, and to date, what expenses has the district been exposed to relative to the construction of the new, potentially the construction of the new high school on a separate divided out billing code? For reference, the code number at Perret is 9053 for the new school project. I'm not sure, so what are you asking for? I wonder how much we spent. What have we spent so far on the high school with them? We, uh, we 9053, can. I've requested before and I'm gonna request again. If we can get an audit on that number, I would like to know what that I, number I is. I think we've provided that information I've, previously, I've, but I, we can easily do that. We can run a report on that right. particular purchase order and. Uh, provide a, um, a breakdown. I believe we had previously provided uh, as, a, as a reference point for the board um, the action item where the board approved um, the uh, contract, what that breakdown was mm -hmm. uh, in terms of the various costs. And we can also uh, break that down in terms of what was what has been spent to date. For that's, what I'm looking, that's exactly what I'm looking yeah, for. Yeah, that's easy enough not, to do. And, and I, you know, in my conversation with them, uh, down at an event we were at, they had mentioned that the job code is 9053. Yep. Thank you. So just to, to clarify, Mr. Winston, you're, at, you're requesting this as a, as a routine update? Every time okay. that we, that as, until <coughs> this is, you know, that we can put referendum <coughs> and approval behind this, right now these are just mystery expenses. Okay. And again, uh, the taxpayers deserve to know what we're spending money on. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah. Is, yes, Mrs. Reese, sorry. Hi. So maybe the, uh, I saw something that, that um, I was happy to see that we, we have uh, um, a new student assistance specialist, right? What number is it? Mm -hmm. 15, mm -hmm. especially with the need for increased uh, regard to mental health of students and, and also a school counselor as well. Why don't I have that? Uh, it's on page 16. Page 16. Uh, it might be on the new. Uh, Revision. I didn't have that. So, um, Got it. you know, I just think sometimes people, you know, we talk about the need for a more supportive uh, mental health issues for children, and we want to thank uh, Dr. Figueroa, Dr. Valeski, Dr. Bowley, and all our staff just for continuing to put an emphasis on this important matter and, and for all the hard work they, you know, that the teachers and the advisors and counselors do. Good point, Barb. Yes. Mrs. Gloss. Oh, I had written a similar note on this um, after it was a student services meeting where we had had a discussion about with the grade realignment, um, the need for more assistance specialists and counselors at Hammershold. And I was just so happy to see it in place already because the need is there and that we're taking care of this so immediately is just a credit to the administrative team. Yes. Okay, but this is a roll call vote. Will the secretary please call the roll? Mrs. Becker. Yes. <clears throat> Mrs. Chu. Yes. Mrs. Wass. Yes. Mr. Hahn. Yes. Uh, Mrs. Reese. Yeah. Mr. Okay. <laughs> yes. Mr. Winston. Yep. And President Wax. Yes, motion carries. <laughs> um, do we need um, either separated out for human resources? 
Nothing, no. Okay, then may I please have a motion for items one and two on our human resources agenda. So moved. Moved by Mrs. Becker. Second by Second. Mr. Winston. Any discussion? Will the secretary please call the roll? Mrs. Becker? Yes. Mrs. Chu? Yes. Mrs. Gloss? Yes. Mr. Hong? Yes. Mrs. Reese? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. And President Lyons? Yes. Motion carries. <clears throat> May I please have a motion for the one item under staff development this evening? So moved. Moved by Mrs. Becker? Second. Second by Mr. Hong. Any discussion? Oh, oh Mrs. Becker, I'm sorry. Give to your hand. That's okay. So, um, We've heard this, this phrase, response to intervention, RTI, mm -hmm. a lot. And I think um, it might be nice or helpful if we could get a five-minute presentation of all the different um, collateral and, and mechanisms we use to address response to intervention, because I don't think that parents fully realize the extent that we go to constantly, our staff is constantly making sure that our kids are where they should be, not just academically, socially, emotionally. And there's so many RTI tools that this district uses that I don't think any given parent would, and even as board members, have a sense of the totality. So I would like to suggest if the rest of the board thinks it would be worthwhile. Um, certainly don't want to ask our administrators to do anything just based on my, um, but I think five minutes on on it would be really helpful and, and give some good information. Yeah, Lou Mrs. Becker, I think that's a, that's an excellent idea and I think that, you know, we can do little snapshots throughout the school year of some of the programs that, that our teachers are invested in and, and providing supports to students. And that behind the scenes, all the, all the, the tools and mechanisms we have at, at our disposal. And I'm sorry, Dr. Velasquez, I'm a little hard of hearing. Did you say, Mrs. Becker, that was an excellent idea? <laughs> no, I said, I said, Mrs. Becker, and then excellent idea was another sentence. Oh, okay, um, thank you, thank you. Was, they were not linked together thank by you any so much. imagination. Appreciate it. You're welcome. As you, could hear, you could hear that really well, though, couldn't you? <laughs> thank you. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Extensions, motion carries. Do we need to separate anything out under student services this evening? No, then may I please have a motion for items one through six? Discussion? So moved. Sure. We have to make the motion first. Oh, okay. Mine. Uh, moved by Mrs. Becker. Second. Second by Mr. Winston. Uh, Mrs. Gloss, I will let you start off discussion. <laughs> okay, sorry. It's okay. It's been a long night. Um, I just had a question about the addition to the athletic teams mm -hmm. for the Winter Color Guard. Mm -hmm. um, this is for this year. So Correct. we're already into the winter. Right. I just want to, I know I saw, I mean, the packet was gigantic, but I know I saw that it was for two advisors to work with that group. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I just want to know if we knew if we had the numbers. I know we've had it before. Do we have the numbers to we, support this already? We do. Okay. Yes. Dr. Figueroa, we, so we have 11 want. registered as of today. 16, though, have expressed interest. Okay. So for a first time, this is really good. And this is really uh, students who wanted to extend what they did in the fall, which mm -hmm. is outstanding. Mm -hmm. uh, that they really, they came to us. Their, you know, the uh, advisors came to us and said, this would be a great idea. So um, this is a real positive mm -hmm. thing. Thank you. But it's just the color gourd portion, correct? This is. It's not the um, mm -hmm. instrument. Correct. Oh, interesting. And, and historically, we have done this. I don't know how many years ago it was done, but we, we did, we had, we had a history of this doing it. It went away for quite a while, and then this is actually revitalization of that. They'll great. be able to compete in anywhere between two and five competitions. They'll have mm -hmm. practice two to three times a week. So this mm -hmm. is something they really wanted to do, and it, it's right. very, very happy. Thank you. To the board for support. Very nice. Any other discussion? Okay, Mrs. Becker and Mr. Hong. Uh, do you want to go first? You'll go first. Okay. He's a gentleman. <laughs> Listen up, Dr. V. I got another excellent idea. <laughs> um, you know, when I think back on school nurses, right, um, back in the day, it was a place you used to go and, and you'd get a band aid and um, Sometimes your temperature taken, and sometimes you'd wait for your mom. <clears throat> that was obviously a while ago. 
Um, I think, again, it would, it would be really nice to hear, even from um, Mrs. Blaylock or, or Lou, um, five minutes worth of what the life and tasks of a school nurse today are, because I don't think anybody as a clue of it will the extensive, take more than five mm -hmm. yeah, but the ex the well, we'll extensive responsibility these staff members have is incredible, and and how it's just become all encompassing. Mm -hmm. They work with every part of the building, with all departments. They work with the PTAs. Uh, each school nurse is just incredible, and I, I I think it would be nice to have a little bit more appreciation of of what they do. Be happy to do that, and as you as you saw, not too long ago, our, our nurses' responsibility goes up to and including saving a child or a staff member's life. Uh, you took and, the words right and out of so, my mouth. But, but I did want to emphasize that we're just not talking about the student population anymore. We're talking about the staff population as we have come back in person, and a number of our staff have encountered, you know, physical. Um, disabilities while at work and our nurses are first responders on the scene yes you know so they they, they are a critical uh, piece of our operation critical so yeah we'd be happy to do that I'll also add that we have you know, many students that will visit the nurse uh, sometimes just for a social emotional mm -hmm. you know few minutes just to get through the day because they've developed a relationship with them so our nurses are a critical part of the success that we have in each school. We have fantastic nurses in our district. Really yeah, and it, as life has gotten more complicated, it, it's, it's, <coughs> they are directly affected. Absolutely. And, right you know, we kind of, we, we, we approve things like a, a nursing service plan, and it made me think, do we really <laughs> understand the, re the extent of the responsibilities? So, again, five yes. minutes. Thank you. We'd appreciate mm -hmm. that. Again, as long as the rest of the board thinks it's worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Laura, okay with you? Of course. Oh, I'm sorry. Look at that. I, you were a gentleman and you were penalized for it. My apologies. So, uh, I have two concerns about the items. So item number one, about the, uh, the winter indoor color guard. So it states that it will attend two to five local high school competition, depend on the availability of student bus and etc. So p when the student joins this team, they anticipate they're going to compete. Okay, so please try your best to make sure the compete happen. So uh, uh, if we told the students that, oh, we don't have enough bus, so you guys cannot compete, I believe they will be very disappointed. So please make sure, try your best to make sure the competition does happen. Okay. And number two about the, the nurse. I want to say a lot of good things about our nurse. And so each time we got called from Memorial School nurse, uh, Mrs. Samuel, my first response is, which one? <laughs> yeah, because it's <laughs> right. So, but when I go over this the data, the 2021 to 2022, you know, I, I do have a concern. So we have eight elementary school, and the students are various. Memorial School has most students. So I check out the, the, the provider. So this report shows that every school has only one nurse, no additional. And they did all kinds of good things, but I chose one which I believe can represent the workload. So most of the schools, they, they, have, they have visit to the house office total is about 4,000. The lowest one is urban. It only has 2,540. The most one, memorial is 7,156. So apparently for each nurse, the workload is very, with very significant. Is there any way we can help the nurse in, with the most office visit? 
such as memorial school. So, you know, from 2,500 to 7,100 is a huge difference. Mm -hmm. One north, mm -hmm. all one north. So that's the thing that when we do the plan, so we need to factor in this, the workload, because memorial has most students. I believe they have most uh, teachers and supporting staff. So apparently the one nurse, they showed a lot of work. So please think about that nurse's workload. Mr. Hong, we do, and, um, but I, the factor that we're dealing with with so many of our positions is there is a limitation on the number of candidates for school nurses. There are the people that, that want the jobs, um, that are available for the jobs, uh, is really diminished right now in this, this economic environment. Nursing services that we use and we do contract with a variety of nursing services when we need them, uh, same situation. The, the, the work pool is pretty thin right now. And so one of the things that we're working on is to make sure that we retain the great employees that we have. Um, and we're working very hard to create an environment, not only monetarily, but a work environment. And so your point about equalizing the workload is, is, is noted. But there, there will be a disparity based on the size of the school. There's nothing we can avoid about that. Because some of our schools are just organically larger than the others. But we're working on it but it's a matter of personnel, too. So because I don't want uh, one nurse work too hard, got crash. So because it's, apparently there's not a small difference, it's huge different. Right. So can we provide a assistant? I understand the lack of working people, qualified working people, but I default this for you. I just only raise my concern. Sure, I trust sure. you, you will solve this problem. As and soon it, as and acknowledged, I, I completely understand what you're talking about. Yep. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, will the secretary please call the roll? Mrs. Becker? Yes. Mrs. Chu? Yes. Mrs. Gross? Yes. Mr. Hahn? Yes. Mrs. Reese? Yes. Mr. Winston? Yes. President Lax? Yes. Motion carries, <coughs> leading us to new and or old business committee reports, information items, and for the good of the cause for the board. I, I see the Student Services Committee, but I believe I reported about that yes. on the December 15th meeting? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. Yeah. Whereas the Board of Education must discuss matters which are not appropriate for discussion at a public meeting, and whereas these subjects are within the exceptions to the Open Public Meetings Act and are permitted to be discussed in closed session, the Board of Education intends to discuss matters as follows, those items listed on tonight's agenda. The length of closed session is estimated to be one hour, after which the public meeting of the board shall reconvene and action may be taken. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the East Brunswick Board of Education will recess into closed session for the aforesaid subjects. So moved by Mrs. Becker. Second. Second by Mrs. Reese. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Thank you. Good night. Happy New Year. Welcome back to everybody. Congratulations again, Megan, on Princeton. Yes.